everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Today we are talking about a TV that I've been really excited to do a review on. That being the TCL R646 6 Series with Google TV. Now, as some of you know, I do have both PS5 and Xbox Series X consoles now, and I want to be able to take advantage of everything those consoles can do, and a big part of that is having the right TV. My TV was getting a bit dated, so I set out to find the best TV that I possibly could at the best price, and after tons of research, I landed on the TCL 6 series. From everything that I have heard, these have amazing panels. Uh, there were some concerns with the software, but I decided to take the chance and pick one up, uh, do some comparisons and report back to everyone on what I found. The model I have here is the 2021 edition with Google TV. It's 55 inches, but it also comes in 65 and 75 inches. As far as the design goes, it has narrow bezels along the edges and a brushed metal bezel at the bottom along with the built-in speaker. The build quality is great. It definitely has a premium feel with the brushed metal along the sides and the legs and that front bezel. Uh, it is a little bit on the chunkier side in terms of thickness. It's just under four inches thick at the deepest point along the back, which is quite a bit for a new TV. Now, just for reference, my old Samsung NU8000 from 2018 is actually quite a bit thinner. But putting that aside, none of this feels flimsy or cheap. The metal feet provided support the TV really well, and they also have built-in cable management along the back of them to keep your media area clean which I think is a really nice touch. Uh, on the back right side of the TV, you have a power switch and a mic off button if you are concerned with privacy. And just above that, you have all your ports, which are pretty standard. You do have four HDMI ports, but you have two there that feature HDMI 2.1 with 4K up to 120 Hertz. Now, for me, those two parts are crucial because I wanna be able to utilize HDMI 2.1 on both the Series X and the PS5. And I want those to run at 120 hertz where at all available. Obviously with this supporting 120 hertz refresh rates, it is a 120 hertz panel as well. Uh, it's mini LED, which is something else that was a must have for me in my next TV. When I started considering an upgrade, I was pretty set on an OLED panel, but mini LED kind of won me over after I got my MacBook Pro, which also has a mini LED display. I couldn't believe how great the picture was. Mini LEDs offer deeper blacks over standard LED panels, and they can get much brighter, and they do have better color. For me, OLED screen burn-in is still something that is on my mind a bit, so I think a mini LED panel just made the most sense to me. Not only is this display 120 hertz 4K, it does support variable refresh rates as well to reduce screen tearing, which is an added bonus. It has 1.07 billion colors, 1200 nits peak brightness, and 240 dimming zones that provide good local dimming, which helps out with contrast, which is an amazing 8600 to one native ratio that increases to about 19,000 to one with local dimming. The panel from my perspective is outstanding. One thing that I was concerned about when I bought this TV is just that a lot of cheaper TVs suffer from poor black and gray uniformity, but this panel is great in all the tests that I've ran. On top of that, the contrast and the colors are really excellent. Uh, the R646 supports HDR10 and Dolby Vision, and it covers about 90% of the P3 wide color gamut. Uh, I was shocked at how dark the blacks were and just how vibrant all the colors get. It's not gonna be the same level as the top-notch OLED panel, but it is still really impressive. Gaming on the 6 Series is very smooth, especially on the Xbox Series X. I feel like I'm gonna say series a lot in this video. But anyways, it is smooth on the Xbox where you see more 120 hertz content. Uh, Halo Infinite, which is my game of choice since buying the Xbox Series X is buttery smooth. Uh, the input lag is very low, sitting around six milliseconds at 4K 120 Hertz, which is great for playing online. And really every other game is no different. The same goes for the PlayStation 5, even games running at 60 Hertz. The colors really pop on a lot of those single player titles on PlayStation 5 that make the console so great. It really adds to the overall experience. Playing Horizon Forbidden West, for example, there is a noticeable difference in the image versus regular LED panels that I've tried, and really any of those great action adventure PlayStation exclusives that have stunning visuals. 
It really enhances the experience and really whatever game that you're playing on either console, uh, anytime you're looking at scenes with high contrast or bright colors, this really stands out. I do also watch a lot of content in my spare time, uh, both movies and TV, and the Series 6 has been exceptional for that as well. This is really where the black uniformity helps out a lot. Uh, movies generally have more dimly lit scenes, and that uniformity plus local dimming, wide color gamut, and the impressive contrast really complement the cinematics in a lot of scenes. But I don't want to just throw my opinion out here. I could tell you all day how good this panel is, but really, context is everything. So let's do a little cost-benefit analysis here. You can find the TLC R646 for around $700. So if we look at similar TVs around this price range, some common models that you'll probably see are the Samsung Q60A that has a 60 Hertz refresh rate, the peak brightness of 480 nits, and a 4600 to one native contrast ratio. Then we have the Sony X80J with 60 Hertz, 400 nits peak brightness. It has an IPS LED and 1100 to one contrast ratio. And then there is the LG Nano 75, which is also 60 Hertz, 270 nits peak brightness and has an LED panel and has a 4300 to one contrast ratio. These numbers all pale in comparison to the TLC 6 series, which as I mentioned earlier is 120 Hertz, 1200 nits peak brightness and has a mini LED panel, 8600 to one native contrast ratio, which is leaps and bounds better than those other models from bigger name brands. Uh, to get something comparable, you're really looking at something like the Sony X95J, which is around $1,500 right now on sale, or the Samsung QN85A, which you can get for around $1,100 currently, but that model still does lack a few features that the R646 has. Uh, in any case, I just wanted to throw those out there to show you that this panel is really punching above its weight class. Back to watching content, I've done all of that through the apps provided via the Google TV software that's built into the TV. This was one area of concern for me. You see a lot of stuff out there about it being super buggy and not usable. Uh, but I do think a lot of those complaints may have been before some of the operating system updates were rolled out. Uh, all I can say is that I have not come across any issues myself, but I did update my TV as soon as I set it up. I do really like the dashboard, especially how it consolidates a lot of the streaming services to one home screen with a little Rotten Tomatoes rating underneath. There's a pretty standard settings menu with easy to navigate menus and options. And overall for me, everything has been very smooth. There is a huge app selection to choose from and this TV also does have Wi-Fi 6, which is awesome considering I have a Wi-Fi 6 system. I haven't had any trouble at all with the connection and I've been able to pair this up to my soundbar via Bluetooth and control it with a provided remote with no issues. The remote itself isn't any anything fancy, it's not going to win any awards for looks, but I do like that it's simple and it's easy to use. Uh, I know some people don't like the lack of labeling on the buttons, but I don't really find it necessary. Uh, maybe it's because it's somewhat similar to my Samsung remote, but it is intuitive enough that I've never wondered how to do something. You have a ring that has buttons that control your playback and your navigation, uh, some menu and settings buttons, and quick access to things like Prime, Netflix, and YouTube if you want to tune in to any of my videos. Subscribe. <laughs> there is volume buttons along the right side, similar to what you'd see on a lot of Roku TV remotes. And if you're using those to turn up the volume on the built-in speakers, those are actually pretty decent as well. There are two 15 watt speakers along the bottom. They aren't as good as a dedicated soundbar or a speaker setup, but they are very clear and do have low distortion. Uh, they do lack any kind of deep bass, but I doubt you're really expecting that with a speaker of this size. If you're just using this casually and you aren't concerned as much with audio, these will do you just fine. All in all, I think that the TCL 6 series Google TV is probably the best value buy out there right now for a TV. 
Now, I did have concerns when I was considering buying this, like the uniformity and the comments about having a buggy OS, but for me at least, it has exceeded my expectations. Sure, maybe the R646 is a bit chunky, but the build quality and most importantly, the picture is on another level when comparing this model to other brands at similar price points. Uh, gaming, TV, and movies have all been amazing, and I am super happy that I decided to buy this TV. Uh, if there's anything that you want to know about the TCL R646 that I did not answer in this video, or you have any thoughts about it, uh, drop those in the comments down below, and let me know what you would like to see show up on this channel as well. Uh, subscribe for more tech-related content, spank that like button if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.